Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in North Adams, Massachusetts, and we are at Mass Mocha, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. However, I'm here to do something that you don't normally do at an art museum. I am here to ride a roller coaster. In fact, I am here to ride what, it, what, what very well may be the most exclusive roller coaster on planet Earth. The, the, the roller coaster that the fewest number of people have had the opportunity to ride. Now, sometimes, you know, I, I, I talk with people who are, who are very much roller coaster enthusiasts. I ride roller coasters for this channel, but I'm not, I'm not uh, what Homer Simpson would say, an out of state roller coaster weirdo. Um, and I say that, I say that uh, in jest because uh, the roller coaster community is amazing. But uh, one thing that roller coaster enthusiasts do is uh, they have a system, a, a, a system that they call, they, they call, they have roller coaster credits as if like they, they ride a roller coaster to get that unique credit for that roller coaster. So they can kind of kick off all of these roller coasters. Some credits are considered rare. You know, they have limited, they're hard to get to. They have a limited availability. So this, this roller coaster here may have the most exclusive roller coaster credit that you can obtain. I hope to obtain that credit today. The roller coaster here is named Brava. It's created by an artist named E.J. Hill. He has a art exhibit here called Break Run Helix that is based off of roller coasters. It has some of his, some uh, roller coaster themed sculptures here. But most importantly, he has Brava, which is a fully functional gravity based roller coaster within the walls of the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. Now, I, I had been watching this for some time because you had to uh, reserve a seat ahead of time on the internet. The reason for this is they only, they only allow seven people per day to ride this roller coaster. The roller coaster sits one person. They run it once an hour. There are seven slots every day available. So when I first heard about this, I, I, I gotta ride that. That's really fun. And uh, I got online and they were all booked. It was booked up for months. And I kept checking back and finally, I checked in and I saw an opening and I, and I grabbed a hold of it. Um, this was a few weeks ago uh, before I left for Colorado. So I kind of carefully, carefully scheduled it so I could be back from Colorado, race over here to Massachusetts and ride Brava. So yeah, very excited to, to get a little chance to ride this very exclusive and very fascinating roller coaster. Let's head inside the art museum and uh, see if we can go find this roller coaster. So please, follow me. You can see here on uh, display these banners show some of the artists you'll find here at the uh, Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. And here's what we're looking for, the E.J. Hill Break Run Helix. I'm not sure what roller coaster that is in the picture. That may be the Cyclone at Cody, Coney Island. They do have a uh, very large museum campus here. As we enter here, we see an art exhibit currently being installed here. Joseph Grigley, in what way wham? See the caution tape up as they're installing the exhibit. And here we are. The uh, artist here is E.J. Hill. The exhibit is called Break Run Helix. Talks about how the artist was obsessed with roller coasters at a young age, the design of roller coasters. Also does talk about um, the civil rights civil rights movement and how that amusement parks were often uh, segregated 
some roller coaster based paintings as well. This kind of looks like kind of abstract blueprints for a roller coaster. And as we enter here, we see a set of sculptures made to look like uh, elements of roller coasters. You can see the big hill there. It's kind of like a gateway. It's got the flags on top. A lot of the big wooden roller coasters have the flags once you reach the top of the lift hill. See like a ride vehicle there, a roller coaster train made out of wood. I believe the artist uses recycled materials to create these sculptures. You can see the little bits of track there along the ground. And it's like a, like a swing of some sort here. It's almost like a deconstructed roller coaster here. You can see that there, the big tower. This would be like the kind of roller coaster that would blast up really high and then slide backwards here. See this, this uh, roller coaster car here with the heart on the front. And here is the center point of the Brake Run Helix exhibit, a full working roller coaster by the name of Brava here in the center. And uh, one thing that makes this interesting is that uh, in between rides, we're actually allowed to touch the roller coaster and actually make communion with the track, which is something you never, ever, ever get to do in amusement parks. So yeah, you can just see the it's a very short ride. Start up there, I think it's all gravity power. There's no lift hill. Someone gets pushed down there, travels along the course here, and eventually runs out of gravity right there. Yeah, the car will be pushed down here. Just does that quick little loop and stops right there. And you can see the cart there. Just uh, room for one person. Simple seat belt. You can hold on to this bar, I guess, there. Pretty, uh, Pretty cool. Yeah, see the eventually the car after traveling through here it like starts to go back up that hill and then just runs out of gravity and stops right here. It's definitely fascinating just being able to uh, be this close to a roller coaster track. You know, of course, at amusement parks they always have the fences up because uh yeah fun fact um most people that are, are killed by roller coasters are not actually on roller coasters most times someone will drop something say they lose their phone or their hat will fall off the roller coaster and the person will sneak under the fence to try to retrieve the item and will get struck by the roller coaster coming by which is why amusement parks do not allow you to uh, come up and touch the track in uh, between rides. So uh, this is a this is a rare opportunity. You know, obviously it's done in a different way to make such a thing uh, such a thing safe. Okay, it looks like they're closing off the air, or the roller coaster area at the moment. Oh, it looks like they got the. Uh, the cable to pull the cart up to the top of the hill. Oh, 
There it goes, getting pulled to the top. I signed up and uh, and it is I'm really excited they did uh, they were going to thank Mass Mocha they did make an exception normally they do not allow people to film their ride but they agreed free graciously agreed to allow me to film my experience using uh, using my my chest harness and my sports camera uh, so yeah very excited uh, like I'm about to join one of the most exclusive roller coaster clubs in uh, in the world I think Brava, I think less people have rode Brava than any other active roller coaster, so very, very excited. It's such an ominous feeling. I don't know, I've, I've rode plenty of roller coasters before, but just waiting to be the one person loaded on this roller coaster as we sit here quietly in this room. It's kind of a, kind of a different sort of feeling. All right, so we head up this staircase to board Brava. Here we are on the upper upper deck here. I guess they're gonna pull the cart up and get it ready for me here in just a moment. Get kind of a view from above here. They're about ready to winch the cart up and uh, get it ready for me. Chariot awaits. Just be careful getting up, it's a bit of an adjustment there. All set? I am. Clear to ride. Okay, away we go. All right. All right, we're getting pushed, pushed off the edge here. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh! <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I felt like we're gonna go back through the whole roller coaster. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so that was a pretty amazing experience. Uh, you got to ride roller coaster inside of an art museum and uh, is a fun roller coaster and yeah something about being the only person in it and you know be able to see and absorb the whole thing kind of has a unique experience i know they mentioned in some of the literature that there's uh, some inspiration by uh, people who make backyard roller coasters which i've always wanted to do but as a researched backyard roller coasters they have very low weight limits so i don't i, I can't possibly ride any sort of back ride backyard roller coaster. I know there was one in Indiana for a while, famous, it was the blue one, the famous one in Indiana, but it was like a low, low weight limit. This has a, I forget the exact weight limit, but but it falls within my parameters, so I was able to ride this. So yeah, it's a very unique experience in pretty much all senses of the word, of the, of the word. And uh, yeah, it, it runs on weight, so I think my ride was a little different than the person before me. It was a, a young lady went and she kind of just stopped at the end. My I, I went almost all the way up the hill and then like slid back quite a ways. But yeah, it's really fun. It's using the whole gravity thing. There's no lift hill or anything. They just at the when they get the car to the top, they use a winch to get it up there and then drop it down again. It is like it's a, it's a lot of fun. And 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 now I have the one of the most elusive roller coaster credits <laughs> in uh, in history of mankind. Um, I know this is going to be here for until the end of the year. I don't know what's going to happen to it after that. Hopefully, I'd love to see it get uh, permanently installed somewhere. I think this is just a temporary exhibit now, but yeah, a lot of fun. This is a, it's a really, really amazing experience. So yeah, you are pushed off the edge there. The guy walks around behind you, pushes your cart down here, which seems like a when you get to the edge it does seem pretty pretty scary like a pretty steep drop you come screaming down here up there and around the loop here rushing through here and then you start going up the hill and then come rolling back I rolled probably back to about here and then gently came to a stop this art here is by mark swanson it says a memorial to ice at the dead deer disco i already love it oh wow this is actually really amazing a memorial to ice at the dead deer disco you can see they use these taxidermy forms here. These are taxidermy forms where you stretch deer skin out over top of them. These are the heads and these are the back ends of deer. Up here we have a taxidermy bird and down here there is the taxidermy form for a rattlesnake. You put the snake skin over top and then I guess add a rattle onto where that wire sticks out can see these like uh, cat-like figures here you can see that shadow behind them it's pretty pretty beautiful some antlers up there a tinier deer form down there the deer up there draped with cloth and then down here all these different framed photos Oh, there is a deer. There is a deer in that photo right there. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not an art critic. I don't know that much about art, but I do know what I like. Walk back into this section. Well, you can see there's some sort of animal under that cloth there. Upside down bouquet of flowers there. You can see the lights dancing over here. Some more uh, mysterious photos.
Now that's an interesting uh, taxidermy form there. Like a, I guess it's for like to, to portray animal as being laying there, being dead. This reminds me of the uh, Pieta, the sculpture of Mary holding Jesus. Instead of Mary, you have this ghostly cloth figure. And instead of Jesus, you have this uh, deer, this dead deer taxidermy form. In the center of all this, there's hanging this big, uh, this big dark form. And then down here, these, uh, I don't know if they're supposed to, but uh, yeah, these kind of look like uh, like turds. Yeah, I do love this, uh, this exhibit, the uh, Memorial to Ice at the Dead Deer Disco. Here's some uh, bejeweled antlers, almost like disco balls. Yeah, I think often in art museums, some donors will donate money in exchange to have a gallery named after them. This is the Fulkerson Family Gallery. And then this emergency door here. This is the Jay and Rachel Tarsus's emergency exit. This is Carrie Schneider's Sphinx. See the photos there? As they kind of fold to the ground. The artist's name is Carrie, but this uh, the pictures are actually remind me of the movie Carrie when she gets uh, pig blood dumped on her head. You can see these giant photographs all like folded into a big pile. That's pretty, pretty amazing. I do like that. Now the buildings themselves can be kind of confusing to navigate. There is uh, all these buildings, they all connect on the second floor, which we are at. There's kind of a cool tunnel here, but uh, that's uh, roped off. out into the courtyard here Let's see uh, how all the different buildings connect see their, their number there's building six there and then you have to be on the second floor in order to connect some buildings have three floors so yeah I'm, I'm trying I'm trying, <laughs> trying to find my way around now here's a walkway here this isn't a normal walkway this is Harmona City the tonal walkway. The desolate. The bright, the bright, the bright. The sad, the sad. The sad. The sad. look almost like animal traps to me. One of the bottom are full of rocks. There 
There's like a cardboard tube coming up into one of the traps there. These are cotton balls hanging from strings. That fan is jammed full of rocks. This is Kelly Ray Adams here forever in your debt. So they exhibit on student debt here. These bagging bowls filled with money and apparently you can actually donate money change to the uh, to the bowls and this is at the end of the exhibit she will uh, put half of that towards paying off her uh, college loans and half towards an agency that works on uh, student debt so there you can see all the bowls of change there Oh, you can see it's starting to run out down here. Some of these bowls are empty. They only have a little bit of a little bit of change in them. And I can definitely relate to the uh, crushing power <laughs> of student debt. Still, uh, still paying on my uh, college loans for a uh, degree that I no longer use. This is Louis Burgess in here. This reminds me of Davy Jones from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. This hanging chandelier here. You can see all these intertwined tubes. You can also make out there's at least two people in there. Two pairs of legs all wrapped in these tubes. See dangling above us it's these glass platforms covered in toys. You can see uh, Star Wars toys there. There's some uh, aliens. It says, these instruments are for looking only. Enjoy playing the instruments inside the gallery at the right. Oh, okay. So this is uh, Gunner Schoenbeck. And I guess these are the instruments you're not supposed to touch. But they imply that there was instruments that we were allowed to touch. Like a harp-like instrument there. I must admit, these do look pretty, pretty fun to touch. It's like a xylophone up there. Some uh, some metal to bang on. Oh, look at this big, uh, happy-looking guitar. Let's just come in and play. Oh wow, that's actually just like a huge room full of instruments that we are allowed to uh, allowed to play.
Here on the top floor, we can see the toys there a little easier. You can see they're descending like steps all through the different floors of the buildings. Oh yeah, so Mr. Potato Head there. Different animals. Oh, I think I see a little Mogwai down there. It's actually a rainy day here at the art museum. See the rain's coming down pretty hard out there. Mm -hmm. This is Daniel Giordano. This is Love from Vicky Island. It's a very interesting sculptures in here. Yeah, some very interesting, very interesting figures there. It's like some sort of mutant shoe there. And this one looks like it's covered in peanut butter. And I do believe that is the strangest motorcycle that I have ever seen. There's some sort of log or stump there. And uh, that's all like Christmas ornaments, like Christmas bulbs and whatnot, covered in like melty garbage. This thing here has chicken feet sticking out the sides. These look like night lights from some sort of alternate dimension. You can see kind of a map of the museum there. You know, see all the buildings there connect on the second floor through the tunnels with their separate buildings repurposed as an art museum. And now we exit through the gift shop. These up here are pet beds. You can see the big fish, the penguin there. I don't know. Sometimes it's tricky to uh, get cats to go into things. Sometimes you buy them like a cool little house or bed and they just simply 
won't go in it. I do like this faux taxidermy lion there. Where you can have a lion head on your wall without having to uh, shoot a lion. I have a faux taxidermy unicorn there as well. Some puppets. Puppets here. The apple there. A little worm as a puppet. Hello. Some of the more popular animals. The axolotl, of course. And, oh yeah, there we got a narwhal. Hopefully the rain has let up a little bit. Okay, looks like the rain has uh, pretty much stopped. We also have a art vending machine here outside. So you can actually purchase pieces of art. Oh, there's some stickers in there. Some other smaller pieces of art. Look at that. It says you can buy a The Void in order to uh, scream into it. It says scream into the void, release existential dread, nothingness manifested. All right, I think we will get a sticker here. That's number 13. One, three. And there it goes. Reach the here to get it. Little sticker there it says Art Vending North Adams. So thank you for joining me here today at Mass MoCA, the Massachusetts Museum of Modern Art. I kind of had to like figure out a way to make this all come together. Had to get uh, advance uh, reservations for the roller coaster Brava, but uh, it was an amazing exhibit. I love the roller coaster exhibit. It was just so so cool. I like the, the sculptures uh, inspired by ro roller coasters as well as. The ability to actually ride on a roller coaster, one of the most exclusive roller coasters in existence. I'm in a, in a uh, in a small club of people who have had a chance to ride on Brava. So, uh, yeah, that was it was a lot of fun too. I would say it's a pretty uh, pretty fun roller coaster. You know, it's it's it it doesn't use chains or, or anything like that. It doesn't have a lift hill. It works purely on gravity, like, kind of like a mountain coaster in a way, but I guess the backyard coaster probably the best way uh, to describe it. So that was the closest I'll ever be to getting to ride a backyard coaster. Although, if you have a backyard coaster, let me know, I'll come ride it. <laughs> as long as it's safe, as long as, as, long as it's safe. But uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Of course, I love the art too. Um, you know, some of the art goes above my head, but I like, I like, uh, I like what I like, and, and some of those things I did like. Um, if you want to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, uh, selling the enamel pins in the Etsy shop. I think I have them here. You have the carpet bagger uh, monster pins currently available. And I'm still doing cameos, personalized messages, greetings, birthdays, anniversaries, just for fun. You want me to just ask a question or send me to send you a uh, personalized message, I'd be happy to do it. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this roller coaster on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.